You're listening to Mangudi Podcast. Amendments to National Tariff Policy 2016 is quite welcoming for a few reasons. One, it talks about 24/7 power supply at affordable rates. Two, there is going to be imposition of penalties on power distribution companies for unscheduled power cuts except on acts of God and technical issues. Three, the state electricity commissions and joint electricity regulatory commissions shall not consider more than 15% transmission losses, that is, the aggregate technical and commercial losses for determination of tariff, which means the loss is not going to be passed on to the consumer, rather it has to be borne by the DISCOM or the distribution company. So the national tariff policy basically talks about uninterrupted power supply at affordable rates. It tries to put a stop on unscheduled power cuts and also not letting the customers pay for the unfair aggregate technical and commercial losses. So what are the proposed amendments? The proposed amendments shall be called as the four E's. 1. Electricity for all. 2. Efficiency to ensure electricity at affordable rates. 3. Environment for a suitable future and 4. Ease of doing business to ensure financial viability for the DISCOMs as well. Under electricity for all, generation, transmission and distribution of electricity to all, that is 24-7, as well as the rural reach. There shall be a reduction in supply cost to consumers and subsidy through direct benefit transfer. Under efficiency and more affordable rates, there shall be a net metering system, that is, the time of the day metering. You need to pay for the time you use alone. The time shall be counted. And this probably shall reduce theft of electricity. So, time limit with regard to new connections for consumers. So, how is the merit order list functioning in India? The merit order list also increases flexibility in generation and distribution of electricity provisioning power at lower cost from areas of excess supply. So, it does not have a binding procedure to supply power from a specific geographical area. Although its interstate supply has not started yet, we will soon be getting into that. So, we have this portal called MERIT, M-E-R-I-T, which stands for Merit Order Dispatch of Energy and Rejuvenation of Income and Transparency. I repeat, MERIT stands for Merit Order Dispatch of Energy and Rejuvenation of Income and Transparency. It is jointly started by Ministry of Power with POSOCO, that is the Power System Operation Corporation and the Central Electricity Authority. In the MERIT portal, the order of electricity procured by states is given. The main objective of the merit portal is empowerment of consumers and facilitates participative governance. As you can see directly how much is procured and what are the sources of energy supply etc. Number two, it disseminates information on marginal variable cost. And three, there is optimization of power procurement cost for the discoms as well. We know that the evolution of a national grid has led to a single price quotation in Indian Electricity Exchange. But at regional level, price of electricity is higher. As DISCOMs tie up with only few power producers and more with only existing agreements. Hence, the cost reduction has truly not reached the customers. So, merit order list will help them in optimization of power procurement cost and the benefit will be transferred to the customers. Talking about the thermal power plants. There will be flexibility in generation of electricity provided to the TPPs because most of the electricity generation would occur from plants located near coal mines and this will also ease the strain on Indian railways by reducing the need of coal transportation itself. In point 4 of ease of doing business, government has to come up with schemes for, for making the purchasing capacity of DISCOMs even better and see that the willful shedding is not done. Reduction of cross subsidies will also help discoms in having a better financial management. What are the present problems that is being faced? 
The willful default shedding definition and identification has been changed. There shall be a regulatory mechanism and identification of grey areas. That is, during summer peaks, discoms do not buy more power but go on for load shedding. So there is unfair grid stabilization process. The unfair grid stabilization process takes place also by cutting the power for the poor and only supply for the rich. In the present scenario, India has capability to generate adequate power for all its consumers. Therefore, low shedding can mean only two things. One, lower investment and two, bad financial management of the DISCOM. Appropriate commissions would ensure that the cross subsidies are reduced and the tariff for all consumer categories are more fair. What will be the challenges that is being faced by the amendment? One, bad financial management has already let discoms vary, so discom purchasing capacity is a question. Two, under investment in distribution networks. Three, irrational pricing. Four, India is consumer pricing oriented and affects investment. India is one of those countries where the industrial tariff is highest and lowest for the consumers or for the domestic consumers. 5. There has to be reduction of cross subsidies. How fast and fair it is going to be, we'll have to wait and see. What is the way forward? Awareness on use of renewable source of energy for electricity that will help with merit order listing. 2. Increasing technological viability for the same. 3. Improve the ease of doing business. 4. Promote transparency, consistency and predictability in regulatory approaches across jurisdiction. Thank you for listening to this episode. Meet you in the next episode. You are listening to Mangudi Podcasts.